From anglerfish to possibly extinct species, all are on display in the underwater library at Scripps Institution of Oceanography. The remarkable collection has about 2 million marine specimens, all preserved in time. Some date back as far as the 1800s. CBS 8 Sean Stiles takes us inside the vast collection in tonight's Earth 8 Report. You may remember about four weeks ago we showed you this little guy an anglerfish here at Scripps Institution of Oceanography. Now, Brian White was here and did the story, and he found out they had over two million fish in the collection. So we had to come back to take a look. Um, and this is the Scripps Institution of Oceanography's marine vertebrate collection. Right. So when we say marine vertebrate, we mean things with backbones that are living in the ocean. Ben Frabel is the marine vertebrates collection manager at Scripps. I mean, I, I'm astounded how many fish in this collection, I mean, not here, but the entire collection. Yeah, so in this room, uh, there are about two million fish specimens. And Ben's in charge of all two million. A thousand or so of these jars. Just like any good library, Scripps archives go back in time. This is one of our oldest lots. These are three salmon that were collected in 1886. Along with the odd and peculiar is this deadly stonefish. On their back, they have these spines that have a venom that is apparently quite painful and potentially Deadly. Or there's this lancet fish that has an incredible appetite and eats other fish whole. These guys are a midwater lizard fish. Uh, local fishermen may know lizard fish as those pesky fish that take their bait all the time. The collection covers the world but has a focus on the Pacific. Ours is a bit focused on the Pacific Ocean and especially fishes of the Eastern Pacific, say from Alaska down through Chile, including the tropics like the Galapagos and places like that. You also find specimens from Australia. This is a fish called a leafy sea dragon, which is related to seahorses and pipefish. It's actually a type of pipefish. That the Birch Aquarium here at Scripps was um, a pioneer in getting these to actually breed in captivity. It also keeps track of fish that might be lost forever. It's called a swallow damsel because they have this forked tail like a swallow the bird. Um, but this particular species is potentially extinct. To keep all these specimens in a suspended state, it takes an interesting cocktail. So they're put through a series of chemicals, kind of like embalming a body. This prevents any decay, kind of fixes proteins together, um, and then they're stored long-term in spirits. Ben even brought out the reason we first stopped by. Oh my, the anglerfish. You know, they're kind of hovering in the deep sea. They use this little lure on their head. It's called an esca. It has glowing bacteria that live inside of it. They wave that around. And that little glowing light looks like something tasty, maybe a little squid or something like that. Something will swim up. It's not something they can eat. It's actually this fish. They open their mouth very wide, oh. slurp the prey down. You're probably wondering why it's important to have such a large collection. So these are used kind of like a library. Researchers from all over the world can either come visit us or actually will send fish in the mail to them. With over two million fish in the collection, one could spend months looking. But what we saw was absolutely amazing. Besides the incredible two million fish collection they have here at Scripps, they've also got an invertebrate collection that would blow the fish collection away. If you'd like to learn more about supporting the collection here at Scripps, I'll have a link on this web story. Sean Stiles, Earth 8. Uh, amazing and creepy at the same time. Yes, I'm glad he was wearing gloves. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs>